So in one of my latest videos, specifically about dead ledger queues, which is basically used within RabbitMQ and message queues, uh, go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. We mentioned a thing called a raft algorithm, uh, which is basically a consensus algorithm, which in fact builds the quorum queues. This new feature that RabbitMQ has and why is it advised to actually switch into it. Now let's try to understand this. RabbitMQ has obviously its versions and starting with the version 4.0, which was released on April 14th, 2025, we have a new type of a queue, which is called a quorum queue. Let's try to learn what it is. Basically, quorum queues are an alternative to classic queues. So what's the difference exactly? So this is a classic queue. We have a simple message queue and the message flows from here to here to the consumer. Now this is fine. And this is something we would call a non-mirrored mirrored classic queue, meaning it's basically running on a single node, so a single instance, and it's kinda not fault tolerant, or at least as fault tolerant as we would like it to be. Compared to mirrored queues, mirrored queues meaning there's one main queue and there are replicas basically, or let's call them mirrors. And what happens is the messages flow through the queue and this queue saves the messages, this one obviously, and sends it to the consumers, but at the same time, they get replicated to another mirrored queue. Basically, you can think of database backups. All right, pretty simple. And these are also running on a different node, meaning if one of the laptops, laptops, if one of the computers goes down, let's say the server shuts down, this one would usually live on a separate server. So your messages or your queue is still active and it can now become the leader. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons. So there's data loss in a non-mirrored one. Mirrored one obviously survives the node failure, but it's slower. Well, we have an uh, advantage here because it's gonna be faster. It's a trade-off and use cases that you would normally use it for a smaller project while any big project should have a mirrored queue. Now with quorum queues, this kind of changes. So let's try to um, understand this schema or understand this sketch. So we have a producer and a consumer again, and this time we have more than two mirrors. I just put that like this to for you to better understand. And what quorum queues are, the word quorum is basically coming from the fact that the majority of these nodes have to agree on a specific leader. So let's say currently this guy is the leader and more than three nodes or more than a half, which is n divided by two plus one, have to agree, let's say these three, have to agree that this node is the uh, leader. Meaning the leader, what's it's gonna do? Let's go to the actual ref consensus algorithms page. Here you have some kind of a description. And as you can see, currently the S3 node is the leader and it's sending heartbeats to other nodes. Imagine we have five nodes, all right? If one of them does not send the heartbeat or the acknowledgement back within a specific time limit, then it's considered as lost. And then there's still consensus that has to be taken into, into account. Meaning if this one is lost, then the other three has to vote on a specific leader. And if the leader goes down, obviously then there's a new election. This is how nodes can pretty much self elect and kind of understand where they have to copy the data when it comes to mirroring, so to say. And this is basically an alternative to mirrored classic queues because they can self elect their reader and therefore distribute the data better. Now, what are the use cases? Well, the thing is, Quorum queues can be used, but you actually also have another type, which is called streaming. Streaming can also be used in sort of quorum queues. So quorum queues are for mission critical scenarios where you are weak. You cannot just afford losing a single message, all right? So for example, incoming orders in a sales system because you will lose money or vote votes cast in an electoral system. Obviously, you're gonna elect the wrong president. So let's quickly have a review by going to the Quorum Queues webpage. So if you go through this documentation, you will basically understand everything that I explained so far. An interesting thing here is uh, is the features list. 
Okay, so the features list is, is something that we also covered in the previous video. So we're gonna have uh, poison message handling, meaning how the poison messages, poison messages are the ones that try to get delivered. So for example, here, we try to deliver the message to the consumer, consumer rejects it, okay? We try again, the consumer rejects it, and we try the third time and it rejects it, and this message is called a poison pill. What do we do with that? Normally, you would put it into a dead letter queue, go watch my previous video again, and this is what Quorum queues now support by default. And then we also have everything that comes to limits. For example, you can define an option called delivery limit, which is directly related to the poison messages. Also, a dead letter queues. Also, some other options that you can use, for example, overflow, uh, reject publish, and then there's another one called at least once, which means even when you put the message into the dead letter queue, the dead letter queue also has to acknowledge that it received the message, meaning everything that's rejected by the consumer then has to go to the dead letter queue and dead letter queue also has to make sure that it received basically to improve the false toler tolerance into the next level. Now, some of you are asking, what about Kafka? Well, it's a different technology than RabbitMQ, but Kafka also switched to a Raft algorithm from a Zookeeper. But since Kafka is not RabbitMQ, and speaking of RabbitMQ, this Raft algorithm or Quorum queues are per queue, all right? They're not per the whole RabbitMQ instance. They are only per queue. Meaning if you have, let's say, queue called payment, okay, payment order completed, this Raft algorithm or Quorum queue is going to be related to this specific queue and not other queues. So they can still be classic queues. Now, when it comes to Kafka, the difference is that Kafka uses KRAFT to manage its metadata. So it doesn't really have queues and so on. It has, it's a message broker. And it basically, when Rabbiton queue does leader election with, K, uh, with a consensus algorithm for per queue, Kafka is gonna do it per partition then the data models is are basically topics and partitions versus queues. And here the goal is high availability for message queues. And here the KRAFT was basically to replace the Zookeeper so you don't have a dependency. And basically that's it. If you guys learn anything new, as always, smash like, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Next one is gonna be interesting, so stay tuned.